Gotta love early morning underways. Much cooler this early. Reveille this morning was at 05. We are gonna make our way from Belle Glade, Florida up to CARS. CARS is the Kennedy Space Center campground, which is a military campground, but the catch is it's first come first serve. So we're hoping to get up there early, get a nice sight by the water so we can watch a launch tonight. Not really sure what they're launching, but Hopefully, whatever it is, is exciting because we haven't been there before. As long as we've been full-timing, I still use my checklist every time I hook up the, the Jeep. It doesn't take that long. It takes about, you know, five minutes from the start with the tow bars to my handy-dandy instructions that I printed out. So, let me get to it. Disengaged. Shift in reverse, make sure it's not gonna move on me. Park and brake always engages. One, two, three, four, five. Back to neutral, back to park. Off we go, done. So now all I gotta do is I always double check and make sure my emergency brake is off, which it is. And then uh, we get out, we test lights and brakes, or we test lights, brake lights, and make sure the wheels are free spinning on both sides. While Phil's doing the last part of the Jeep, I usually do a final walk for Giz to make sure he's good to go. And now we're gonna pop in so we can do light check. Good. Good to go. Good to go. Hold it, ready. Good to go. Good to go. Now I'll go up front and I'll check the headlights, running lights, and the blinkers up front, and then we're good to go. We're doing a little pre-staging here before we get to our first come first serve. We're gonna take off the car so I can head in ahead of Phil to see what's available. If I can park the car in the site, then they'll give it to us and I can just radio back. Getting up at five in the morning paid off because we got us a waterside spot. Oh yeah, I'm, I was so excited when I put up, pulled up. There were actually three sites available and we're traveling with friends, so we each got a site. Yeah, it was really nice. We unhooked probably two miles down the road and Stacy came in on the Jeep just to kind of scout it out and see if we could get a spot. And lo and behold, she called me and she's like, get rolling, we got a spot, there's three open, move, move, move. The name of this campground is Cars Park um, Campground. It's actually a military slash NASA employee campground. So unfortunately it isn't open to everyone, but it is a first come first serve park right on the water. And the benefit to being on the water is the view no you get to see the launches oh. that's the whole point <laughs> okay. it's kind of too far away to see on our camera but you can see the launch pads right across the water so there are a couple of launches scheduled for while we're here hopefully we'll be able to get them right here from and, this spot and show you guys yeah now we can only stay for two weeks here on the water side but in the campground in general you can be here for a month and some are here even longer if they apply for like i don't know I don't know, written application. <laughs> yeah. I don't really know. Gotta we won't permission. be here that long, so no. it doesn't matter to me, but. This is a good day as any. To start the rebuilding of life The roads 
that they open our many when the old one's gone under the night and i can feel the sun on my skin for those of you that have class a's and use your toilet while going down the road imagining what the space shuttle astronauts had to use they had to strap their feet in put lamp bars over them so they didn't float up while they went i think we got it easy we just finished watching two films from this building, which is Legends and Heroes. And Heroes, and it was phenomenal. Yeah, I suggest when you first come in, go there and get started because it just kind of gets you, it grabs you by the feels. Yeah. Um, and it I gets was a you. little teary eyed the first time. Yeah, it gets you, you know, gets you in the space mood and, you know, kind of goes through the history of, of, you know, real quick history of the space program here. Um, really cool, really exciting. <laughs> Phil approved. <laughs> We are walking around in circles, stepping on these little lights to help the rocket launch for this little girl. So hopefully we can get the rocket off. Oh, we got it. I had a really good time. I did too. It's pretty cool. Pretty interesting. Although there are still some COVID, COVID closures. <laughs> yeah, or, or COVIDs. <laughs> Whatever you want to say. So some of the food places were closed. The bus was still out. And I thought, I actually thought the buses were running um, out to, off, you know, some of the launching pads or some areas, but the buses were totally down. So you couldn't go out and see all the old rockets and stuff. So um, that was kind of a bummer. Yeah. And the ice cream was closed too. Dang it. All they had was the astronaut ice cream in the gift shop. And that's just like a cracker. I don't want that. I yeah. want ice cream. Cold ice cream. Yeah. So that is also out. Yeah. Um, so the ticket prices are $57 a person. I'm sorry. I forgot to see what the kid prices were. So I'm not sure on that. There is a 55 and older and an active duty veteran discount. Of, no, I think, active duty military. What did I say? Veteran. Can't be I guess you can't do better. both at, one, at yeah. once. Yeah, I know. So you can save four bucks on that. And I think they sell the tickets <clears throat> on base at Tours and Tickets. Would we give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Thumbs I say a thumbs me. up. Yeah. Um, it's a one and done. It's not something you have to come back for. So you're going to spend the money once and you'll definitely be satisfied and glad you came. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely glad we came today. It was, it was a perfect day. Um, and I learned something, yeah. which is odd for me. Yeah. Forced learning on <laughs> Phil. <laughs> this is going to be our third attempt, maybe even fourth attempt, of seeing a launch here. It seems like every night we come out here for the launch, we get all ready, and then they change it. Sometimes <laughs> last minute. Yeah. And right now, I can see the rocket on the launch pad. That's a good sign. So it's scheduled tonight for 10 something. I don't remember 10, what. 20, 10, 30. Something like that. We even got up one night or yeah, <laughs> one, one night, one morning at 2.45 a.m. We came out here to see the launch and they did launch. But unfortunately, <laughs> the cloud cover, the fog, the haze was so much. All we saw was a little blip of Poof. light and then it was gone. Yeah. So that was an epic fail. But we made the attempt. We set alarms. We got up for it. We could hear it more than anything. We yeah. just couldn't see anything. But today it's from a different launch pad. 
I can see it. I mean, and it's it's way more clear. Yeah. Hopefully, it will continue to be clear. So tonight, we can actually at least see the the glow of the rocket as and it goes up. Trail it going up. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully, these clouds move away. But just seeing it with the naked eye from across the water here is pretty good. But in the binos, man, you can really see it sitting there. Yeah. And uh, then we have one more opportunity on the 13th, which Saturday. is Saturday. Is it Saturday? Yeah. Not Friday. Saturday. Anyway, one more time before we leave here to try and catch it. So hopefully we can get a launch for you guys, even if it's just a glow on film. Yeah. And the launch we're talking about is the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. That's right. And for all you people wanting internet on the road, this is your Starlinks. They are sending up more satellites. <laughs> yeah. Today is generator test day. We haven't run it in a while, and uh, normally I do it once a month, but we are about to go boondock, potentially, so I want to make sure everything's running good to go um, before we leave here and go set up and realize that the generator's not working for whatever reason. So what I normally do before I start the generator is come out here to the pedestal, turn it off so that there's no power going in, and I know what you're saying, Phil, you got an automatic transfer switch, it'll automatically do it. Yeah, I'm not don't I'm not falling for that. I've read way too many forums where the automatic transfer switch failed and there was something that happened to the rig. So it doesn't take me any 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 more time to come out here and trip this breaker and then go in and start the generator. There's more to just coming in here and turning the generator on and letting it run. You should you should run it under load and preferably 100% of your load if you can. And what it does is it burns off the unburnt fuel and all the deposits and and it just It'll gunk up over time, so you want to make sure it's running smoothly for doing that, uh, or or while doing that. Um, and we do include this on our monthly spreadsheet. Um, if you need a spreadsheet, a maintenance spreadsheet, or you want to look at ours, head on over to our blog, which Stacy will link below, and check it out. All right. So first, we're going to prime the generator, hold it down for about 20 seconds or so. And then we'll flip the switch and start it. And hopefully she fires up here shortly. Come on, girl. In a minute. She's warming up. Boom. Now that the generator is running, I'll wait for it to kind of come down, idle down, and you'll be able to hear that um, before I go and turn on the back AC. Now we turn on the AC for the load test. The generator's been running for two hours on load. The AC is still running, so I'm going to cut off the AC first. That's a plus. You always turn off whatever's running before you turn the generator off. You don't want any unnecessary power spikes or, or kill your AC. So I'm going to turn it off here. One of the things I listen for after I turn off the ACs while the generator is on is for it to idle down. You can hear the distinct hum when it's on under load and when it's not on load. So right now, the generator is idling down. So I turned the air conditioners off already and I'm gonna let it run for about a minute or so and just let it kind of finish idling down, kind of cool off a little bit because it was under load for two hours. And then I'll just hit the switch here and stop it. Now that the generator is off, I'm going to document my hours that it ran. Um, so it ran for two hours today. So I'll add those hours to the spreadsheet. If you're unsure of what your generator hours are, you can always come to the front of your generator or however it's configured. Ours happens to be the um, 8,000 kilowatt QD Cummins generator. And you can see right here the hours. So we come out here and verify um, what the hours are on it. Now we do have it also on the dash, but a lot of folks will not have the same setup. So this is where you can always find out how many hours are on your generator. The other thing I wanted to add about the generator hours is knowing what your hours are so that you can properly change your 
oil, your filters, everything. So get into your manual, know what your hour intervals are because everything's based on hours. For ours, the 8000 QD, it's 150 hours for oil um, and 500 for some of the filters. So know what those are so that you don't get in a pinch when you need your generator and it doesn't run. Now we're back on shore power. Maintenance check is complete. Did you win a prize in our last giveaway? Well, guess what? It's on the way. I have a dry bag if there's like something you don't want to take with. Do we want to put our phones in? Oh, we can just put them in here. Yeah. And my wallet. We bring in Scully. <laughs> Scully oh, stays. Scully stays. Scully. 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 You can do her tandem and take his her with you. He's in the number. trunk. He's... Poor thing. No yeah. wonder he's so thin. <laughs> we are headed out for a night kayaking tour. This should be fun. I'm really excited. We have no idea how much we're going to be able to record, but we'll see. But they say that we're going to be able to see things glowing under the water. I don't know. We'll see. I have my doubts. Well, we're turning off the uh, mic too, so we don't know what the sound's going to be like. So, mm. but it should be fun. <laughs> we'll have fun. We it's don't know if you guys be will fun. be able to share the fun, but yeah, we're going to. But have fun. you know, when you're thinking of of different things to do, I mean, yeah, you can go and kayak during the day, and you know, ooh and ah, that's there. But nighttime kayaking, uh huh, I bet you didn't think of that. Have a unit on I'm calling you. Uh, for him. Yeah, these are bigger okay. ones. Okay. okay. You appreciate it. You know. Got my That went a little close to the mouth there. I was a little nervous. <laughs> That's a COVID whistle. COVID whistle. <laughs> Try not to bash Gabe in the head. This side of We're coming. <laughs> You're putting a wonderful silhouette on my on my thing here. I appreciate all your effort. The moonlight is shimmering off your forehead. Yeah. <laughs> the bug spray on it. Yep, I know. Uh, or I'm not really sure if you're going to show up there, Phil. I'm back here. <laughs> Just in case you can't see me. Reach is on the other side of the rock, and from that little island where that sign is, this way, like in between the two, uh, in the canal. When someone asks you what this thing is, you uh, say it's called an Atlantic cannonball jellyfish. Uh, there's ones in the Pacific as well, but they're blue. It's really cool. Yeah, they're really cool. They got 16, yeah. they got 16 uh, oral arms. Wow, yeah. So all of these, you can look inside of it. That's an opening. That's where it filters water. That's okay. where it filters water. And there's 16 of them that go around it. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. That's and uh, cool. sometimes there's a little crab hanging out on them. And they uh, they usually got a little relationship. You know, the crab eats the algae off the jelly. And the jelly gives wow. the crab protection. We can go in. almost 3 a.m. <laughs> we are up again trying to catch a launch. The launch was scheduled for last night at a decent time. Or should I say, day is before. it morning, day before, you know, at 10 p.m. That got scrubbed. So it is now 2.54 a.m. and we're going to go outside and see if we can catch this launch. Yeah, let me see here. I'm trying to update this. As of now, it's still a go, but... Yeah. So we have 16... 16 minutes, 16 minutes. So the app we're using is called what? Mission uh, Control? Or? Launch Control. Launch Control. So that's the app and normally by now it will just go away if it's scrubbed, so. Falcon 9's at startup.
Very cool. Totally worth getting out of bed for. Yeah, it was. Um, and then when you heard the, the rumble of the rocket as it's going up, that was pretty cool. I mean, it sounded like we were right underneath it, but we weren't. We were across the bay, but it was still pretty cool. Yeah. You hear the rig running, that means it's moving day. <laughs> yeah, and I'm kind of sad. I really have loved it here. Yeah, this is, I tell you what, for our first time being here, it we lucked out. And if you look across the bay right now, it looks like it's at one of those um, endless pools or whatever. Oh, yeah. Where it looks like there's, everything's just in the water right now. It looks pretty cool. It is glass. That's, yeah. That is for sure. It's probably and, the calmest <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say we've, that. <laughs> since we've been here, but it has been a really great site. It is totally worth it. So if you're able to come on um, the military campgrounds, I definitely recommend this one. Just don't come when we want to, because we want another <laughs> yeah. water site. <laughs> yeah, we'll let you know when we're coming, maybe. <laughs> All right, so from here, um, we're going to another military base. So. Yeah, we're heading west. For those of you trying to track us, we're heading west. Got a beautiful